One of the most common questions we get from church leaders, from parents, and from the warriors themselves is, why did I behave against my value system again? And how should I respond to it? How should I as a bishop respond to it? How should I as a parent respond to it? How should I as a warrior respond where again, I cross the line? There are a lot of words for this. We have relapse, we have mess up, we have slips, we have failures, and some of them, when I'm listening to someone, I almost fall out of my chair, like, what did you just call that? And it doesn't seem like a big deal. So most people choose their word almost flippantly, not realizing that there's a lot of complex psychology behind it. If a person keeps using the word, I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed, then that starts to get in your head. If you use, I slipped, I slipped, I slipped, it's like your brain's only looking for piles of oil on the ground so you don't step on them, right? So there's lots of words and phrases that don't help. After careful work on this concept for many years, we recommend and strongly encourage the phrase lost battles. One of the main reasons we strongly encourage the use of this phrase is to remind you as the church leader you as the parent, as the spouse, or the warrior, that this is a battle. You see, anyone who's participating in the self-mastery trainings on their own or that we offer prefer and value good moral behavior. They want to be good, they want to do good, they want to live a life that is something that others can admire. They don't want to behave contrary to their value system. It might appear sometimes like my kid wants to break rules, my kid wants to view pornography, my kid wants to ruin their life. Developing human beings prefer to have a positive outcome on things. They prefer to have a happy ending. They want things to turn out good. And so if we don't look for the 7,000 year old genius, the satanic entity that is involved in the process of psychological deterioration in a circumstance where the person slides into a behavior contrary to their value system, we call that a lost battle. The first recommendation is to get in your mind the picture of sitting next to a child learning to play the piano. If they're playing the piano and it doesn't go as planned, how do you respond to that? Do you smack them? Do you say, I can't stand to be around you? Do you say, you just need to get out of this house? Do you have a strong reaction to it? Do you say, give me your tempo recommend? Now, wives is a different category. We're not talking about those right now. We're talking about parents. We're talking about church leaders. We're talking about the warrior themselves. If things do not go according to plan, what do you do with the piano? You clear your head, you get back on track, and you start playing again. While the piano is a nice comparison, it's not the most accurate comparison because the piano is not an intelligent opponent trying to ruin your day. Athletes often have the advantage when it comes to psychological warfare with Satan because they already know what it feels like to have an opposing entity. So if I'm playing tennis and I lose a battle, the wisest thing to do isn't to go over and say, I'm a failure, I'm a loser, what's wrong with me? The wisest thing to do is to analyze it. What technique did my opponent use to beat me? Is the first question that you need to be asking. We need to study Satan's techniques if we're going to beat him. Because if we do all the wrong workouts and all the wrong exercises and we prepare for a tennis match that we prepare for wrong, we didn't do it right. We've got to have our basic workouts. We have to have everything build up to the question, what technique is the enemy using to defeat me? There are many techniques and I don't have time today to review them all. That's not the purpose of this video. The entire book, Like Dragons Did They Fight, is designed to introduce you to many of those techniques. Training systems are designed, like Sons of Hume Men and Rone, Daughters of Light, Warrior Women of Light, to learn to catch and defeat so that you can be introduced to all the techniques. Second question, is there a pattern? Is my enemy using a strategic pattern? When I first interview a warrior and I'm asking about their history, I will look for patterns. The most fascinating thing is when I ask, is there a pattern? Almost every one of them says no, there's no pattern. It's random. As I dig in deeper, we find out there is almost always a pattern, but most of us haven't been looking for it. If you know when the Lamanites are coming, if you know where the Lamanites are coming, and you know what technique they're going to bring with them, it's a whole lot easier to get ready for it. 
So look at yourself even before you look at your warrior that you are caring about and check to see about your lost battles when you behave contrary to your value system and take the time to look for the patterns. Is it always in the morning? Is it always in the afternoon? Is it always at night when you're most likely to yell at your children? Oh wait, yelling at your children is a lost battle? I don't know, is that within your value system? So if you're yelling at children or spending money outside of your value system or not getting to the gym outside your value system. I don't know if you know this, but you're having the same problem that the pornography user is having. You're behaving contrary to your value system. How is that any different? As you're helping another person, check yourself. What technique is the enemy using to defeat you? Is there a pattern? Once you've isolated those two things, the third step of the lost battle analysis process is if he tries the same thing again, what am I going to do to beat him? Think about Captain Ronai for a second. As he was thinking about the lame knights coming next, he would think about their patterns. Well, they usually come here. They usually come there. They usually bring these types of weapons. His response was to create a stratagem, a intelligent, prepared response, so that when it came, he was ready for it. And then he would make sure his men were supplied and he would drill them and drill them and drill them so that they had good mental muscle rem memory so that they could act upon their plan with skill and success just like a tennis player would, just like a piano player would. It has to be practiced in order to be successful. So we blueprint, we outline our response, our techniques, and the fourth element is that practice element. What drills do you need to do so that you will act upon your skills your new plan automatically. How many times do you have to drill it? How many times do you have to review it in your head? We do this, at least hypothetically, with fire escape plans. If there's a fire in the basement, here's the plan for the family's escape. Now, most of us didn't follow through on that, but we've been lucky to not have fires in our homes very often. But satanic attacks that push us towards behaving contrary to our value systems, that push us towards lost battles, those happen way more frequently and for most of us, it's at least once a day. How should you respond if you find out that you or someone you love has behaved contrary to their value system? You respond with, okay, you had a lost battle. Let's make a plan. Get a piece of paper out, electronic or regular, and start with writing it actually down. What technique did the enemy use to defeat me? Be warned that if you don't do it on paper, you're going to skip some steps. I have had warriors that I've worked with for many weeks, many months, and when I start the process with them, they still skip the question, what technique did the enemy use to defeat me? And all they do is go looking for their weaknesses and their failures. You need to know what is being used on you. You need to figure out how to fight it. And just so you know, so you don't feel stupid, 90% of the time we need a self-mastery trainer to help us figure this out. So please don't feel weird if you have to get someone on the phone, someone who's already been through this type of training, a skilled professional, and please, in the same way you would with any type of sport or music, we pay a little bit of money all the time for our kids to take piano lessons. Why would you not pay someone to train you in self-mastery in areas where you really want to get successful?